welcome to my introductory zoology class in this class we're going to take a look at the levels of organization in animal complexity and animal body plan before we look at that what is zoology zoology is a scientific study of animals and it is commonly considered a subdivision of the field of science complexity in animal range from the simple protozoa which is now placed in the kingdom protista to mammals which is actually placed in kingdom animalia let's talk about the levels of organization in animal complexity there are five levels of organization in animal complexity and each level is actually more complex than the one before the five levels are actually protoplasmic levels of organization cellular levels of organization cell tissue or simply tissue levels of organization tissue organ or simply organ levels of organization and the organ system levels of organization the protoplasmic level of organization actually involve the single cell organ such as the protozoa like amoebas and paramecium while the cellular level of organization actually involve an aggregation of cells that are functionally differentiated in this case division of labor is actually evident such that some cells are concerned with nutrition others with production this level of organization is actually found in organisms such as the sponges it should be noted that the cellular level of organization and the protoplasmic level of organization are collectively regarded as the cellular level of organization by some authors Tissue levels involve an aggregation of similar cells forming a structure that perform a particular function such as in hydra and jellyfish while the organ level actually involves two or more different tissues forming a structure that performs a particular function. Now, note that various organs actually exist in our body but however, organ level of organization first appear in flatworms in animals. The system level of organization in animals involves two or more organs working together to perform a particular function. Systems are associated with the basic functions in human body such as respiration, circulation, digestion, and various systems exist in the human body. Let's talk about the animal body plan. The animal body plan is diverse and the features or determinants of monocellular animal body plan are the levels of organization, the body symmetry, differentiation of germ layers, presence or absence of body cavity, pattern of embryonic logical development, segmentation or metamerism, cephalization, and limb development. However, the four that we are going to discuss in this short video are the body symmetry, presence or absence of body cavity, segmentation as well as cephalization. Now, do you know what symmetrical nature means? Symmetry refers to the balance in proportion of an organism where the entity or the animal can be divided into two equal portions or paths. Most animals actually exhibit some form of symmetry apart from sponges that are actually asymmetrical. In other words, symmetry refers to how the body is organized so that it can be divided into identical half through one or more line. Asymmetrical organism cannot be divided into two equal halves through any line. It should be noted that symmetry is a basic features of animal body. Let's talk about a different kind of symmetry. We have the asymmetrical organisms, we have the ferrical symmetry, we have the radial symmetry, we have the biradial symmetry, and we have the bilateral symmetry. Let's talk about the asymmetry or asymmetrical organisms. These are organisms that actually have no symmetry and cannot be divided into two equal identical half through any planes or line. Example of this is actually found in sponges. 
However, spherical symmetry, as the name implies, is found in organisms that are actually spherical in their body shape and their body actually radiate from the center of a sphere. Example of this is found in protozoa such as radiolaria, while the other uh, symmetry that we are going to discuss is actually radiant symmetry. This is symmetry about an axis. Animal with radiant symmetry has a body shape that radiates outward from a center point, such as a starfish and jellyfish. The other symmetry is bilaterally symmetrical. This type of symmetry is exhibited by advanced animals such as vertebrates, and it involves a situation whereby the body is actually organized in such a way that it can be divided into two equal halves which are mirror image of each other through only one plane. While the biradial symmetry is actually a kind of intermediate symmetry between the radial symmetry and the bilateral symmetry, in this case, the organism can be divided into two equal halves which are mirror image of each other through two planes only and this is actually found in the comb jelly in the phylum Stenophora. Let's talk about the presence or absence of body cavity as another determinant of animal body plan. Animals can be grouped according to their body cavity type or lack of body cavity type. The epithelial lined cavity is a space usually filled with body fluid which lies between the gut or the digestive system and the body wall. This space within the body houses organs such as the kidney and spleen and contain the circulatory system. Note that the word cavity actually means space and the true body cavity actually arises from the mesoderm layer and it is actually lined by the mesoderma peritoneum. Based on the presence or absence of body cavity, Animal can be classified or grouped into the following acolomate, pseudocolomate, and colomate or eucolomate. The, in the acolomate, these animals do not have body cavity or colon, and their mesoderm region is completely filled with tissue termed parenchyma. Examples of acolomate have flatworms and other primitive animals. Pseudocolomate are animals that possesses cavity surrounding their gut. However, this cavity is not lined with mesoderma peritoneum. It is actually derived from the blastocoel of embryo. It should be noted that the pseudocolomate cavity is derived from both the endoderm as well as the mesoderm, while true body cavity is derived only from the mesoderm. Eucolomate, as we know it, are animals with true body cavity. Their body cavity is lined with mesoderma peritoneum and is derived only from the mesoderm. Examples of eucolomate include the earthworms, insects, sea stars, and all vertebrates. Eucolomate, regarded as the true column, can further be divided into two, namely the protostome and the deuterostome based on whether the mouth develops first or the anus develops first during embryonic development. In the protostome, the mouth actually develops first, while in the deuterostome, the anus develops first. Examples of the protostome include the phylum such as the anthropoda or the anthropods, the mollusk and the annelids, while examples of the deuterostome include the codids as well as the echinodermata or the echinoderms. Again, it should be noted that in the protostome, the mouth develops first, while in the deuterostome, the anus develops first. Let's talk about metamerism or segmentation. Metamerism is a condition of being constructed of a series of repeating parts. It can also be defined as a serial repetition of similar body segments along the longitudinal axis of the body. Each segment is called the metamer or somite. It should be noted that true segmentation is found in only three phyla, namely the annelida, the anthropoda, and the codata, 
Though superficial segmentation is actually found in many organisms, including some advanced ones. The last determinant or feature of the animal body plan in today's video is cephalization. Cephalization refers to the evolutionary trend of concentrating the nervous tissues, the mouth, and sense organ towards the front end or the head of an animal. Fully cephalized organisms have a head and brain, whereas less cephalized animals actually have one or more nervous tissue region. It should be noted that again, less cephalized animals have no brain but one or more tissue region. And the differentiation of the head is actually called cephalization and it is found only in bilaterally symmetrical animals. Let's talk about the advantages of cephalization. Cephalization concentrates sense organ in front of the body. This actually allows a forward-facing animal to scan its environment more efficiently, allowing it to find food and shelter while also avoiding predators and other dangers. Cephalization moves the mouth closer to the sense organ and brain. As a result of this, an animal can quickly analyze food source and this gives them advantage of getting food and ensuring survival. This is the end of this part of the introductory zoology class. In my next class, I'll be giving more details on protozoa sub-kingdom. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you find this helpful. Thanks for watching.